the focus of all those documentaries and Hollywood movies. But there's one version of Titanic we have never seen until this morning. Recently, explorers found an old camera in the ocean with photos of the Titanic, revealing new details of its tragic disaster. The Titanic was consumed not only by flames, but also by ignorance, racing toward its icy collapse. There is a dark side to the history of the Titanic that they do not want us to know. Join us as we uncover the untold stories of what really happened to the famous and most controversial ship of all time. The Titanic Before the Tragic Fall It all started on March 31, 1909, a day many will never forget. This was when the giant ship, the Titanic, began to be built in Belfast, Ireland. The company called Harland & Wolf was in charge of building the ship. A team of creative designers and engineers led the project aiming to make the Titanic stand out as a masterpiece of sea travel. The Titanic was one of three big ships, along with the RMS Olympic and the HMHS Britannic, known as the Olympic class liners. Sadly, each ship from this group faced a terrible fate. The Olympic is often the one people remember most, probably because there was so much excitement about its construction right from the start. The Titanic became famous worldwide even before it was finished, with many people looking forward to its maiden voyage. But what nobody could predict was that this first journey would also be its last. At this time, the White Star Line, the company owning these ships, was doing really well. They had no idea of the upcoming disaster that would nearly destroy them. Early photos of the Titanic, taken before it met its tragic end in the deep waters of the North Atlantic Ocean, take us back to those days. These pictures show the Titanic in its full glory, towering over every other structure around. During its construction, the Titanic was considered an engineering wonder. The team behind it had a clear goal, and people from different jobs worked together to make sure everything was perfect. They had a budget of over $3 million, which was a lot of money back then. You might think $3 million isn't much for such a big project, but in today's terms, that's around $310 million, definitely not a small amount. And speaking of big, the Titanic was enormous. It was 882 feet and 9 inches long, and its widest part was 92 feet and 6 inches across. From the bottom to the top, it measured 104 feet tall. These numbers might not give you the full picture, but hopefully the photos can show you just how massive and magnificent the Titanic was, living up to all the excitement around it. But there's more to this story, and it's not pleasant. The Titanic, a name that would later be associated with tragedy, seemed cursed from the start. Even before its first journey, the ship was already connected to sad events. During its two-year construction, eight workers met their untimely deaths due to various unexpected accidents. These incidents cast a shadow over the ship's grand beginnings. On March 31, 1912, the Titanic was officially ready. This was a big deal worldwide and crowds of people, including the media from all over the globe, gathered just to catch a glimpse of this massive new ship. Everyone hoped to be among the first to board and explore it, but the excitement would soon turn to horror, in a way that nobody could have predicted. The long-awaited maiden voyage had been the talk of the town for two whole years. Finally, on April 10, 1912, in front of a crowd estimated at around 100,000, a mix of excited onlookers and eager journalists from all corners of the earth, the Titanic prepared to set sail. But this wasn't its first time on the water. The ship had made its initial journey from Belfast, where it was constructed, to Southampton on April 2, 1912. This voyage was hyped up to be a luxurious trip, ferrying thousands of passengers, including some of the era's wealthiest and most prominent figures, from Southampton, England, to New York City, USA. The whole world watched, fascinated, but unaware of the looming tragedy. The voyage's plan was detailed and well thought out. The Titanic was to travel from Southampton to Cherbourg in France, then to Queenstown, now Cobe, in Ireland, and from there across the Atlantic to New York. It had a similar route planned for the return trip, which was to go from New York to Plymouth in England, then back to Cherbourg, and finally to Southampton. Here's an interesting tidbit. During the preparations for the Titanic's grand voyage, there was a coal strike happening. 
This led to the unusual situation, where the coal needed to fuel the Titanic had to be gathered from other ships owned by the White Star Line. Despite the strike ending before departure, there was not enough time to stock up on the essential coal supplies. The Titanic had certificates that allowed it to carry up to 3,547 people. This number included 905 first-class passengers, 564 in the second class, and 1,134 in the third class. Commanding this enormous vessel were 944 officers and crew members. Tragically, many of these dedicated individuals would later sacrifice their own lives in an attempt to save as many passengers as possible when disaster struck. But the Titanic story, as grand and awe-inspiring as it began, was filled with foreboding signs from the outset. The deaths during its construction, the chaotic conditions surrounding its departure, and the ominous coal shortage all seemed to hint at the tragic fate that lay ahead. Imagine the Titanic, big and grand, getting ready for a trip that would become very famous. The Titanic's first warning. The story takes us back to the moment when the Titanic was getting ready to leave the dock. A small problem happened which could have changed everything and might have saved a lot of people. When the Titanic moved forward from where it was parked, it pushed a huge amount of water aside. This movement of water caused another ship nearby, the SS New York, to break loose from its spot. The SS New York started moving in a dangerous way towards the Titanic. Many people who had come to watch the Titanic leave were shocked and scared as they watched the SS New York coming close to the big ship. They were worried about what could happen, but luckily, those in charge handled the situation well. Soon, the Titanic was able to continue its journey. However, after the Titanic sank, some people started thinking that maybe the incident with the SS New York was a warning. They wondered if it was a sign that the Titanic should not have set off. We can only guess what might have happened if the Titanic had stayed at the dock that day. The photographs from the Titanic's first trip show us how big and popular this ship was. These images take us back to the time before one of the biggest shipwrecks ever happened. But as the Titanic was leaving, many people on the ship did not know there was another problem. Inside the ship, there was a fire. This part of the story is really surprising. Can you believe that the Titanic had a fire inside it even before it started its first trip? This was a very dangerous situation. There was a big fire in the part of the ship where they stored coal. This fire had been burning for 10 whole days before the Titanic left. For more than a hundred years, people have been arguing about how much the fire affected what eventually happened to the Titanic. In this photograph, you can see damage from the fire on the side of the ship. This makes it clear that from the beginning, there were signs that the Titanic's journey might end in tragedy. According to investigations that started after the unfortunate incident, the crew members who were responsible for the ship's maintenance faced a tough challenge. They struggled with a fire in the coal storage area for many days, but they couldn't extinguish it completely. Although it's still not clear what exactly started this fire, it's undeniable that it caused a lot of damage to the ship's structure. This fire weakened the ship's frame and materials, although it's known that the fire alone did not make the ship sink. However, the damage from the fire contributed significantly to the unfortunate events that followed. Sonan Molin, a reporter dedicated to uncovering the secrets of the Titanic's tragic fate, stumbled upon some old photographs in an attic in England. If you take a close look at the side of the ship in these pictures, you will notice a very distinct, long black smudge stretching for 30 feet. This dark mark is clear evidence of where the fire scorched the ship. By an eerie twist of fate, this scorched area was precisely where the Titanic later struck the iceberg, leading to its tragic end. These new findings make us wonder if the outcome might have been different had the fire not weakened the ship's side. But there's another puzzling aspect to this story. Despite knowing about the fire and its dangers, why did the ship's leaders decide to go ahead with the voyage? Was it excessive confidence, or did they not care enough about the safety of the people aboard? Truthfully, we still don't have all the answers. However, this important piece of information highlights that the Titanic's sinking was caused by a combination of several complex problems that existed even before the ship left the harbor. It was as if a series of unrelated issues lined up perfectly to lead to one of the greatest tragedies in history. Yet, there are still more shocking details about the Titanic that haven't been shared widely. 
The upcoming revelations are bound to surprise you even more. Each piece of new evidence, like the photographs found by Sonan Milan, gives us a glimpse into the conditions and decisions that set the stage for the disaster. The more we learn, the more we realize that the sinking of the Titanic was not just a simple tale of a ship hitting an iceberg, but a complex narrative woven with human errors, natural forces, and unfortunate timing. This big ice chunk played a huge role in the sad story that happened more than a hundred years ago. It was the iceberg that caused the Titanic, a giant ship people thought could never sink, to go under the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean on the night of April 14, 1912. The ship was moving in the dark, not knowing that the area was full of dangerous icebergs that could break any ship, even one as big and strong as the Titanic. People often wonder where this huge iceberg came from and what its story was before it met the Titanic. Some people think that the iceberg started from a place called the Jakob Shavan Glacier, which is near Disco Bay on the west side of Greenland. This glacier might have started forming around the years 1910 or 1911. After forming, the iceberg could have moved northward, carried by the ocean currents known as the West Greenland Current. The story gets more interesting when we think about the journey of the Titanic. Captain Edward John Smith, who was in charge of the Titanic, and his team knew that they were sailing into dangerous waters. They knew that this year, the ice in the sea was spread out more and was found further south than usual. But that's not the whole story. The Titanic had also gotten messages over the radio from other ships. These messages were warnings about the big areas of floating ice and the many icebergs in the sea ahead. Even with these warnings, the Titanic kept going towards its destination in New York. This part of the story makes us think about the decisions made during the voyage. It seems like there were a lot of signs pointing to danger ahead. The Titanic's first trip was full of missed warnings and hidden dangers. Let's find out what went wrong. The Titanic and the ice danger no one saw. A long time ago, a ship named Lorraine was the first one to tell the Titanic about dangerous ice. Lorraine was a French ship. It sent a message around 546 in the evening on April 12th. The message was to let the Titanic know that there was a lot of thick ice in the sea, exactly where the Titanic would later have its big accident. The next day, on April 13th, the Titanic saw another ship. This one was called the SS Steamer Rappahannock, and it was going the other way. People aren't sure if the Rappahannock told the Titanic about the icy water that was ahead. But the Rappahannock itself got badly damaged because of the ice, so they might have warned the Titanic about the danger. On the same day that the Titanic had its disaster, it got many messages warning about ice, but it didn't listen to any of them. The first warning came from another ship called the Coronia. It was in the morning, around 9.12. The Coronia sent a message to the Titanic. It said there were big icebergs, small icebergs called growlers, and lots of ice in the water in front of them. But the captain of the Titanic, Captain Smith, was very sure his ship would be fine. He just said thank you for the message and did nothing more. Then, a bit later at 11.47, a Dutch ship named Noordam sent another warning. It sent this message through the Coronia. The Nordam said there was a lot of ice ahead. It was trying to say that the journey could be very risky. But again, Captain Smith just said thanks and didn't worry about it. Throughout that day, the Titanic was told many times about dangerous icebergs in the water. But no one on the Titanic took these warnings seriously. In the end, the Titanic hit a big iceberg and sank. This sad event caused more than 1,500 people to lose their lives. Now, let's talk about something interesting that scientists found much later. They found an old camera deep in the ocean. The camera had pictures that were very scary because they were from the Titanic. These photos were taken by a man named Seaman W. Wood. He loved taking pictures and was the captain of another ship, the SS Estonian. Just two days before the Titanic's accident, he saw a huge iceberg. It was so big that he was really amazed by it. He took a photo of this big iceberg and wrote down where it was. It turns out the place he wrote down was the same place where the Titanic ran into the iceberg and sank. Maybe this was the exact iceberg that caused the Titanic's disaster. We might never know for sure if it was the same iceberg. But the fact that the place matches is a big clue that it could be the same one that led to one of the biggest sea tragedies ever remembered. One of the very first stories written down about what happened on that scary night came from Dr. Washington Dodge. 
He was a very important person who lived in San Francisco. He was a doctor, he worked at a bank, and he was also involved in politics. Dr. Dodge went on the Titanic for its first trip with his wife Ruth and his young boy, also named Washington Dodge Jr. They got on the big ship in a place called Southampton. Dr. Dodge wrote about what happened in a letter after he was safe on another ship called the Carpathia. His writing was hard to read, which shows he was probably very upset or rushed when he wrote it. His story is one of the clearest views we have into what happened during the last few hours before the Titanic sank. The trouble began close to midnight at 1140, according to what Dr. Dodge said. He and his wife were sleeping when suddenly there was a huge crash. This was the ship hitting the iceberg. Dr. Dodge got up quickly and went to find out what was happening, wanting to make sure his family was safe. But someone told him everything was okay, so he tried to go back to sleep. However, he couldn't relax and went out again to ask what was going on. This time, someone told him they needed to put on life jackets. Things were getting worse quickly. Dr. Dodge, his wife, and his son went up to the top part of the ship where the boats were. He made sure his wife and son got into one of the first boats leaving the ship. Dr. Dodge told people later that there were big problems when they were getting off the Titanic. For example, a lot of the boats left with lots of empty seats. They could have taken more people and saved more lives. Also, there was a rule that said women and children should go first, which meant many men didn't get to leave. This rule made things worse because it meant more people were left behind than needed to be. Dr. Dodge got into a lifeboat eventually because an officer was filling up boats on one side of the ship. But leaving the Titanic wasn't easy. Their boat was being lowered down to the water, but they saw a huge amount of water coming out of the ship right where they were going. This was water being pumped out by the ship. It was coming out so fast that it could have filled their boat and made it sink. The men in the boat yelled out, and luckily they were heard. They didn't get lowered into the water stream and were safe in the end. Dr. Dodge's story is very important because it helps us understand what it was like on the Titanic when it was sinking. Even though we know a lot about the Titanic, there are still many things we don't know. After hitting the iceberg, everything became chaotic. What happened with the lifeboats that mean life or death? Too many on passengers, not enough boats. The story of the Titanic's lifeboats is both sad and shocking. On the tragic night when the Titanic sank, there were 2,223 people on the ship. Unfortunately, more than half of them didn't survive. What makes this even more heartbreaking is the fact that the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats for everyone. Even though it was a huge ship, it only had 20 lifeboats, and out of those, only 18 were used that night. What's worse, many of these lifeboats were sent away not even full. People were very scared that if they put too many people in the lifeboats, the boats might break because of the weight. This fear made a terrible situation even more tragic. Also, there's a big question that many people keep asking. Why didn't the lifeboats come back to save more people? The sad answer is that a lot of the crew were afraid. They thought if they went back, too many people trying to be saved might make the boats flip over or the boats might get pulled down by the sinking ship. So they stayed away, leaving many people stuck in the cold water where they later died. Now, here's something that makes people think a lot. The Titanic did actually have the number of lifeboats that it was supposed to have according to the rules back then. This seems really strange now. But back when the Titanic was built, the rules said it had enough lifeboats for the number of people on board. This means that, in a way, the Titanic was following the safety rules of that time. But these rules were old and didn't make sense for such a big ship with so many people. What's even more upsetting is that the company that owned the Titanic, called the White Star Line, didn't want to have a lot of lifeboats. They thought too many lifeboats would make the ship look bad. They cared more about how the ship looked than making sure people would be safe if something went wrong. This choice shows how sometimes people can make really bad decisions if they care more about looks than safety. The Titanic was supposed to stay above water for a much longer time if something bad happened. This extra time was meant to make sure that nearly every one could be saved. But things didn't work out that way. Instead, the Titanic sank much quicker than anyone thought it would. People still talk a lot about why there weren't enough lifeboats. This is a big deal because having more lifeboats could have saved many lives. 
Now, let's talk about why the Titanic broke into two big pieces. This is something people wonder about a lot when they think about what happened to the Titanic. Just minutes after hitting the iceberg, water rushed into the ship through a big tear in its side. We've talked about this part before. We also mentioned a hidden fire that was burning for days in one of the storage areas where they kept coal, which made things even worse. By the time the ship was filling up with water, most people knew it was going to sink, but they didn't think it would happen so fast. The ship started filling up from the bottom, and this made it very unbalanced. The Titanic was a really long ship, over 882 feet, so imagine how much water it would take to make something that big lean to one side. This imbalance put a lot of stress on the middle of the ship. Around 2.17 in the morning, which was just a little while after it hit the iceberg, the middle part of the Titanic couldn't handle the pressure anymore. It started to crack and then broke between two of its big chimneys. This break happened because the bottom part of the ship was weaker than the rest. The materials used, especially the iron rivets holding the ship together, weren't strong enough. It's strange to think that such a big and expensive ship was made with materials that weren't the best. People still don't understand why that decision was made. Whether or not the ship breaking apart made it sink faster isn't clear, but that moment is a very important part of the whole sad story. When the ship broke, it made loud cracking noises. People who survived the disaster and were floating in the water or in lifeboats could hear it. They saw the last bit of the Titanic stick up into the air, then slowly go down into the cold ocean, taking many people with it. When the Titanic was sinking, where was its captain? Let's look into the mystery of Captain Edward John Smith. Where was the Titanic's captain? On that night, everyone was asking one thing. Where was Captain Edward John Smith? People have talked about what the captain did during the sad events for a very long time, but nobody knows for sure what happened. Some people who saw it happen say that Captain Smith went to the ship's control area right after the big ship hit the ice. This was the start of a terrible night for Captain Smith, a rich man who had been a captain for more than 40 years. He realized that what was happening was kind of his own fault. He had been too busy with less important things and had not made sure his crew and passengers knew what to do if there was an emergency. He had decided they should do other things instead of practicing how to get into the lifeboats. This choice turned out to be very important because if there had been a practice, everyone might have known better what to do when there was real danger and maybe more people would have survived. As the ship went down into the cold, dark sea, people say Captain Smith helped a lot with trying to save others. There is a story that he even saved a little baby, swimming to get the baby to a safe boat. And when people in the lifeboat wanted to save him too, he said no. He wanted to stay with his ship till the end. These stories highlight the captain's incredible courage, or so they say. But there's another side to it. Some people argue that Captain Edward John Smith was missing when things got really bad that night. According to these stories, he left his crew when they needed him most, at a time when his guidance was very much needed. It's hard to say which version of the events is correct, but they both make us think a lot about what really happened in the captain's final moments. This situation also brings up a big argument. Did Captain Smith go down with his ship, or did he survive? Some really out-there stories suggest that Captain Smith survived the disaster and spent the rest of his life hiding out on a remote land, living under a different name. Since no one ever found his body, this idea seems a bit possible to some, even though there's no real proof. So, while it's an interesting thought, it's probably not true, but you can think what you want about it. Now, Captain Smith's role in the story of the Titanic is something people will talk about for a long time. But was he a hero or a villain? That's a big question. Some say he was a hero for his bravery and the stories of him helping others. Others think he was a villain for not being there for his crew and passengers when they needed him the most. When we try to figure out who Captain Smith really was, it's complicated. If he really showed great bravery, like in the tales where he's saving people, especially the one about the baby, that would make him a hero in many eyes. However, 
There's always the other side where if he truly disappeared when everyone needed him, that would not be the action of a hero. Moreover, the mystery of what really happened to him adds to the legend. Did he stand bravely on the sinking ship, accepting his fate, or did he escape, leaving everyone else behind to face their destinies? The unknown adds to the intrigue and keeps the discussions going. The finding of the Titanic at the bottom of the sea is a big story. Right after the Titanic sank, people started to talk about finding where it lay in the deep sea. But back then, in the early 1900s, we didn't have the tools and machines we have now. They tried a few simple ways to find the Titanic, but couldn't really do a big search until much later, about halfway through the 1900s. Then, a big effort to find the Titanic started. A man named Robert Ballard was a big part of this. In August 1985, he helped lead a team that included both American and French people. They were on a big ship from the U.S. Navy called the Knorr. They were out in the ocean to try and find where the Titanic was lying on the ocean floor. They used a special underwater camera called the Argo. This camera could go very deep into the ocean, about 13,000 feet down. That's really deep. The camera moved all the way down to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And for the first time, people saw the Titanic since it had sunk in 1912. The old ship was broken in two pieces but was sitting straight up on the seafloor. Seeing the whole Titanic shipwreck for the first time is a huge deal. This old shipwreck is still one of the most talked about stories, even though it's been more than 100 years since the Titanic sank. Not long ago, a company that makes maps of the bottom of the sea showed the first ever complete digital picture of the Titanic. This is a brand new way for us to see the most famous shipwreck in the world. Even though people have been going to see the Titanic under the water since they first found it on September 1st, 1985, it's been really hard to get a good look at the whole thing. The ship is huge, and it's in a hard-to-reach spot deep in the ocean. But now, with some really smart technology, we can see all parts of the shipwreck very clearly. The company called Mel Ann and Limited made this new technology. It let the scientists see every part of the Titanic, like the front and back parts and the big area around the ship that's full of bits and pieces from the wreck. It's like they made a digital copy of the whole wreck, so we can look at it better than ever before. This new picture shows us how big and tragic the wreck is, and it shows lots of small details too. People are saying this is the biggest project of its kind under the sea ever. They got a huge amount of information, like 16 terabytes of data and more than 7 15,000 pictures and videos in really high quality. With these new digital pictures, scientists are excited because they think they can study parts of the shipwreck they couldn't see well before. Now, with this new technology, we're starting to learn more about what happened to the Titanic bit by bit. We're finding out new things about the disaster and getting a clearer picture of what the ship looked like and what happened to it on that tragic night. Could these newly uncovered Titanic photos change what we know about the legendary sinking, or are they just eerie snapshots of a disaster? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep-sea mysterias and untold stories.